G'day there, you're watching the Aussie BIM Guru. Today I've got a really quick video just to show a helpful trick that a lot of people don't know about in Revit, um, which is really relevant typically to smaller scale projects as well, um, but you can use it on a lot of different scales. So today we're looking at how you can show roof lines above in floor plan. This is a really common thing that you might need to do on a housing project, for example, but also on commercial projects where you might have a canopy that you want to show the extent of in floor plan. So we're trying to essentially show these blue lines in floor plan. Now the problem here is usually this is above the view range of the floor plan that we're dealing with. So you won't see the roof, but we're going to use a little Revit hack in order to do this. Um, and it's one of the only times that I usually use the tool that we're going to use, which is the line work tool. Um, I'll be using a context model that's available on my BIM Guru website um, for purchase with the template that generates it as well. Um, and hopefully this will give you a better model that you can train with as well. Anyway, let's dive right into Revit. So I'm actually in the sample model and this is a plan where I have set up this trick. And you can see that we end up as a result seeing the extent of our roof. And note that these aren't 2D detail lines. This is the actual roof element itself. But typically we can't see this. So I'm gonna start with a fresh plan and show you how to do this. So I'm just gonna to go to a level one plan I've just freshly generated. Now the trick here is that we need to activate an overlay, well an underlay, overlay, whatever you call it. So we're going to set our range for our overlay in our view properties. We're going to change it from none to a level that's above our current floor. Now currently I'm on level one, so I'm going to pick my ridge level of my roof. Actually no, I'm going to pick level one. I think level one should show it. Usually you need to sort of keep cycling through them until you can see what you need. Um, I think in this case, you can change some properties as well, such as saying, I only want to go from one to ridge level. So you can set the view range of your overlay or underlay. Um, but now you can see that we're actually looking at our roof. Um, I can see all my flashings, I can see my gutters and also my roof itself. Um, it's up to you which line you use to represent uh, the, the edge of the roof. In this case, I'm just going to use the roof itself. So if you've modeled, um, say, your gutters and your flashings with gutters and flashings and, and fascias, you can just hide category and just leave yourself with the roof. And if you want to be really simple, just isolate the roof. And now I'm looking just at the roof. Now, in order to represent our roof, we're going to need to override its lines. So I'm going to go to modifier and I'm going to use the line work tool. I'm going to just replace them with a gray, a, a, a black dashed line in this case. So I'm going to find dash three in my template. And I'm just going to click on all the edges of this roof. And I'm just going to make sure I get all of them. So it's a little bit of a manual process. And you might think that when you disable the overlay or the underlay that we're not going to see these lines anymore because they belong to an element outside our view range. But part of how the line work tool is designed to work is that even if you can't see the element, it remains behind once the overlay or underlay is turned off. And now we can see our roof as an element and also see its edges as well. So you can also tag the element if you need to for some reason. Um, say you're trying to tag the description of a canopy or a roof that's embedded in its keynote value, for example. Um, but yeah, this is a really handy technique. Um, I do use it from time to time to do various things such as showing lines over and sometimes lines under. But do keep in mind there are some tools to manage uh, showing lines underneath such as show hidden lines and remove hidden lines. So if you have a slab folding underneath the slab, for example, it would be better to use the show hidden lines tool in this case than to use the line work tool. So use it sparingly um, and try not to use the line work tool for things like this, where you change, say, something that you can see to say something like invisible. It's pretty bad to do it unless you have to do it. Um, but it, usually I try to avoid using it for these sort of purposes. Instead, you should use uh, visibility graphic overrides or view filters um, as a first preference rather than using the line work tool. Um, but here's a really handy application for it. In fact, one of the only applications I would say for it that will help give you um, a more presentable floor plan for a resi project or to show you some canopies for a commercial project, for example. Um, so that's pretty much all for today. Just a quick little demo. Um, trying to keep them a bit quicker these days. Um, so hopefully that helps uh, give you another trick uh, for your Revit modeling. 
So thanks for watching today. Um, if you're not already following and subscribing, uh, feel free to do so. And I look forward to seeing you in future videos like this one. Thanks. Take care. Bye.